Hello YouTube. In today's video I'm going to be modifying my Beretta 92FS uh, grip to a Vertec grip. So effectively what I'm going to do is remove the hump on the back uh, strap of the Beretta 92. I got a uh, set of these Hogue uh, Beretta uh, I guess it's M9A3 grips. These convert a Vertec or M9A3 grip profile back to uh, this profile. One of the most important things will be to not cut through. There is a hole uh, for the hammer strut and the mainspring that runs all the way through the frame from top to bottom. It's a straight hole uh, and what I'm going to try to do is connect make a flat between this point here and between this point here. So like I said, most important thing is not to cut all the way through. The radius is also important. So I'm going to need to make sure that I can follow this radius pretty accurately. And then after that I'm probably going to checker um, again, checker the frame. So this edge right here can serve as a guide for uh, how parallel my cut is going to be to that uh, to that hole. So this edge runs on both sides, and that's what I'm going to be using as a as a guide. We're going to try to stay right in the middle. I've decided to not cut uh, any of the footage out. So what will follow is a bunch of uh, sped up footage, um, and I'm leaving the uh, sound or volume um, of those. Uh, sped up clips at about 10% so you can actually hear a little bit of uh, file work but <clears throat> most important thing uh, which I can't stress enough is to stay as parallel as possible to those uh, to that hole basically running through the frame and uh, those side guides the reason why you see me kind of uh, crouching down uh, looking at the frame is uh, checking uh, how parallel I am to those uh, edges. Also, cleaning the file is pretty important. Um, I'm trying to use the uh, coarsest file I have, and this file is actually losing teeth a lot. Um, I, I could show you probably in the next video, if I remember, I can pull it out and show you just how many teeth are gone um, from the file. But uh, it's pretty important to clean the file frequently because if one of those teeth gets stuck um, in the file, for example, it's going to keep cutting grooves in the workpiece. Or it could get stuck in the, um, in the aluminum frame and then make your file skip or lose more teeth, basically. Removing this uh, material uh, this very first cut was actually a very lengthy process, and uh, I could have I could have made it simpler or easier for myself and filed down the sides uh, sides a little bit um, first to reduce the amount of surface that I needed to keep flat and uh, keep checking and all that. But uh, I decided that it's probably going to be better if I just keep it um, a wide kind of surface because what I was also checking is how parallel I was to the rear of the magazine well when I was cutting this. Um, I just wanted to make sure that my radius is not going to be thrown to one side or the other by a lot, um, which could, I guess, happen. I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe maybe not. But anyway, what I've decided to do is just keep filing this um, area. So I decided to wrap a little, a little bit of masking tape around the beaver tail area just so that if I get close to it or start to get close to it I don't uh, actually cut into the frame too much. So this is just a preventative kind of measure. You'll probably notice that I had kind of a difficult time um, maintaining the flat surface. 
So I kept rechecking, um, kept filing in the other direction, the opposite direction. And uh, finally, you'll see it eventually, I decided to also run the file uh, just vertically. <clears throat> kind of using the file as a flat checker. Uh, and that worked out pretty well. The most important thing for me was to keep the center of the Scott um, flat from uh, top to bottom, basically. And eventually you'll see it. Um, like I said, this was the lengthiest portion of the, uh, of the modification of filing. This is where you can see uh, where I started using the straightest file I could find uh, to check the quality of my cut and basically to finish it, to flatten it out completely. At this point I think it's safe to say that uh, I've created a good base uh, for the rest of the cut. What I'm going to do is cut uh, slants uh, and eventually radius the entire thing following the radius here and the radius here at the back. Uh, so you'll see a series of flats forming and then we'll just round everything over. I think you've seen me do this before where I create a series of flats uh, to later produce a radius. Uh, this is by far the easiest way I've found uh, because you can track the thickness of those flats, you can track their straightness and then finally when you radius uh, you'll see that you have a truly kind of nice radius forming. These flats were very important as well because what I was trying to do is connect the um, the undercut of the beaver tail to the bottom edge um, of the frame basically. Um, trying to produce a straight line that was parallel to the to the edges we discussed before that I was using as guide. Um, so that was very important as well. Now I'm going to file down the edges here between the flats. Now again dividing the edges. And now finally I'm going to round.
going to uh, clean up my filing here. And that's basically it.